Blog Talk Radio. First World Order Radio, finally, finally, we are on the air. No doubt. There's always going to be somebody in the building on First World Order Radio. We get on into some of that order consciousness tonight. First World Order Radio every Wednesday, 8 p.m. We got to talk about what is taking place on the planet. There's always going to be somebody in the building on First World Order Radio. First, we need to let you know we're going to be doing more shows giving out more information on Wednesdays. Wednesday is 8 o'clock. We are now going to make this week the hottest day of the week. Proceeding levels in time, order, and importance. The most prominent parts, voices, or instruments. Earthly state of human concerning existence. And then both of the most between property or distance. System regulates the bring about specifics and the movements on value and natural characteristics. Come and radiates electromagnetic of sound to the earth and that your thoughts transmit it. Proceeding levels in time, order, and importance. The most prominent parts, voices, or instruments. Earthly state of human concerns and existence. And it's definitely most of two, quantity, or distance. Order. System regulates to bring about specifics and the group based on value and natural characteristics. Come and radiates electromagnetic of sound to the earth and that your thoughts transmit it. Right, get your schedule, your schedule right. You need to know our intentions straight out. All right, so I mean, these tools are given throughout the various languages for to piece the puzzle of this ancient history school back together again. And what we plan on doing, both of us, is bringing y'all some surefire dynamite. We're going to take this level up a notch. We're going to have stuff to do here. This is not just going to be about philosophies and theories and shit that works. You have an activated pipe in land which have produced this black chemical called melon. See, what we did was gave a hard line in the sand between the different definitions of esoteric studies and exoteric studies. Playtime is over. We deal with the spiritual Block talk, block talk This is the block talk I lean L. Bay Dropping jewels every day Block talk, block talk This is the block talk Metaphysical We deal with the spiritual So you claim to be a god? Damn right I'm a god The maker The owner Cream of the planet Earth Father of civilization God of the universe Wow I didn't know that Wow I didn't know that Tune in or lose, friend. All strategies apply mathematically. The information he drop is real powerful. So get your notepad, it's more than an hour full. Watch your jaw, the crew is watch us talk. And digital to the land wherever we stand. First world order, we bring it at home in the first quarter. Invisible lines don't apply, we cross borders. Silly rabbit, knowledge for God. No matter what you resign, Mars, Temple of Mars. So don't fret or proceed with hesitation. Just tune in to Blob Talk to get the information. Peace. Whether you suffer from pain in your back to aches in your knees, come on down and purchase you some ancestral tea to get rid of all the parasites, toxins, and fleas. Spiritual elevation for cosmic gravitation. So put away the patience, because there's no time to be wasted.
Young, all right, all reserved. Peace, peace, peace. Back once again with your host, Dr. Lane Bay. Let me bring on my co-host, Brother Fahim. Are you here? Hey, how I tell you, Washington East, Dr. Lane. Hey, I tell you, Washington. Hey, I tell you, Washington East. Jack, how you doing tonight? Doing well, God. Well, how you doing? Doing good. Doing good. Can you hear me clearly? Uh, yes. All right. All right. That's good. That's good. All right. Um, we're going to be getting into tonight's discussion, which is basically um, the Divine Hymns of Akhenaten, uh, Uncle Aten, um, really is a book in which that my wife and I wrote. It's called Divine Hymns of Uncle Aten, The Occult Powers of Psalms, The Art of Candle Burning, and The Healing Aromas of Incense. Um, so it's got a lot of information in it. So we're going to get into some of the segments and some of the excerpts concerning that, you know. Um, really, we're going to be getting into a little bit of the sounds of power, um, the healing aspects of sound, what's called the haku, you know. So just let us, you know, just check us out um, as we continue on here over the next over the next couple of hours. All right. So, um, who's Akhenaten, uh, Unk Aten? Well, um, Unk, of course, means um, key or source of life. Aten uh, means light or sun disk, you know. Um, so the radiant sun disk, you know, uh, will be what the name would mean. You know, so when we go in and really do some in depth research and you come to find out that Akhenaten was an eighteenth dynasty uh pharaoh, as we refer to him as Nagu, um based off the Nile Valley contribution to civilization by um Anthony T. Broder. And there's a lot of interesting things in which that we found um, parallel, you know. Um, you do your research, you check out um, James um, Henry um, Brest, 1895, in his um, Berlin dissertation. He speaks about the hymns of Amenhotep IV. All right, which is, of course, um, all gotten, you know. Um, and he spoke about the fact that earlier on, um, the Nagu all gotten, um had expanded the belief system, which is the mono belief system, monotheistic, in the sense that um, only deity that could be worshipped was Atan. Now, of course, our time becomes, in Hebrew, Adon, Adonai, which means Lord or Master, as it's been translated to, all right? Now, in Greek, he becomes Adon, as in Adonis, which, of course, Adonis was um, one of the sons of Zeus. All right, based on the Greek mythology. And we see the correlation between the names coming from the Kemetic or Tamarian traditions into the Minoan, Cretan, Grecian tradition into the Phoenician, Hebrew traditions that this name um, travel as the one deity, which is amongst the solar disk, which is externally is a principle of the sun, not just the physical sun that we are able to see in the sky 90, 93 million miles away, but this was more so Alcyon, which is the central sun, which sits at the center of our galaxy in the Pleiades. All right. 
in the galaxy, of course, is the Milky Way galaxy. And so we see that that reflection is as above, so below will really be when the Kundalini raises up through the seven chakras or Shankaras um, within the Amazulu tongue. What is Sanskrit? Kundalini is named Umbalini, and the Umbalini will raise up well, right through the Aritu, as it is called within the Tamarian or it is also called the seven souls of Ra. It is also referred to, like we say, Shankara, where the origin of the word Chakra originates, which is Shin, which means spirit. Ka also means spirit. So it actually means um, life spirit or spiritual life um, housing that divine essence uh, or pathway. And when that energy comes up to the top of the head, it produces or mixes with merge intercourse with the soul, which is embedded inside of the pineal gland, which is also the sleeping um, God. All right, so or said is the Kundalini. And when the two merges, they produce Heru or Heru consciousness. With Heru consciousness, you develop that sun disk around your head. And that sun disk is a ton. All right, so that's the reason why the teachings of of a ton was so important. Because it wasn't just something external that he had people worshiping. They oftentimes mistake him, him and Nefertiti, his children out in the sun, as they're doing what looks to be um, similar techniques that we now do within Qigong or Tai Chi, in which that we get our um, hour of sunlight a day. As melanated people, that is something that we all need to do. You know, as the sun being 93 million miles away, it takes eight minutes and 20 seconds for the sun rays from the sun to touch down the earth. Well, it takes the same amount of time for the blood to circulate through the entire body and bathe the brain in its nutrients. Every eight minutes and 20 seconds. That's no coincidence. So, he was teaching the correlation. And this is something in which that has not been explained uh, oftentimes uh, when it comes to the reason why he did the stop, why he stopped the Amen priesthood is because they begin to act as mediators, just like the Catholic Church. No different. And put themselves that, um, like, um, you have committed a sin, my son, confess it unto the, unto the Father, you know, type of thing, in a sense. So instead of a person looking inside of themselves for our time, they began to look at the priesthood as being the intermediate or intermediary between um, themselves and their higher self. So that's what he was attempting to stop, was that exploitation. Uh, of course, we know that there's legends on which that states that he was killed. Um, there's still speculation on that. You all right? The 18th dynasty was um, more of the more known dynasties, as it seems, of um, ancient Kemet. And even though his name was erased, 
in many ways, but if you go to um, Tel El Amana, um, you know, there, you know, near the Giza Plateau, there's still depictions, of course, that they have found. And of course, we know, uh, you know, that his head was betrayed, you know, with a long, you know, elongated, uh, high forehead, you know, with a large nose, full lips, large chin. And he was long, slender neck, round chest, inflated stomach, and large thighs. Well, basically, he was stating in that depiction that he was the embodiment of life. And how do you become the embodiment of life? Is by, um, like, what happens within Qigong. Um, there's three areas in the body on which that you purposely choose to store energy. One is your navel, one is your heart, and one is your third eye. And you're able to store energy in three of these places. It's called the three treasures. All right? Deal with your chin, your chi, and your shin. All right? Shin kara, shin. The word shin is not just African. It is also Asian. And it means the same thing. All right? In China, in Japan... Shin means spirit. It means the same thing within ancient Sumerian or Metrometra. Then translated means spirit. But it's a refined spirit. It's not just the Ka spirit, which is more the etheric double, etheric double. But the refined spirit on which that you have worked on. And so there's a understanding that we must have, all right? So this common denominator, of course, is a symbolic gathering of all attributes of our time. The creator God um, into the physical body of the king, you know, or the pharaoh, Nagu himself. Man, who's the king? The king is the living image of our time on earth. Same thing that we have in the illustration of Jesus later on, um, thousands of years later, you know, saying that he's God incarnated on earth. And of course, that's still um, debatable. Christians still debate that in their, in churches today. Um, I remember the debate um, as a child in my church uh, between my, um, my great aunt and um, another um, church member on which that the church member said uh, that Jesus was God. And my own great aunt said, no, nah, Jesus was the son of God. So they went back and forth with that because, uh, and really, there's, there's no, uh, everybody's perceiving it from their own perspective. And even though reading the same Bible, there's still debates. You know, so um, Uncle Aten, he could therefore display on earth the Aten uh, multiple life giving functions. That's what that was symbolic to him. So the appearance of female and male physical characteristics on the same statue makes sense, you know, to the intended, you know, audience, for those that was able to understand. So these attributes rendered the king of Pharaoh Nagu, literally superhuman, a divine body which goes beyond human experience. All right? So Montserrat, um, you know, um, you can look him up. Um, he somewhat breaks that information down uh, from his book um, based on our uh, team. All right, so we also looking at the fact that Uncle Aten introduced the monotheistic mystery religion, and it's not really a mystery because I just revealed what the mystery was. 
but this is what Europeans, I'll be honest, refer to the comedic sciences or Sumerian sciences as mysteries because there was layers to it. And they use these mysteries today to control the minds of the masses the which that they tell you is demonic, but yet they use it at the same time to control the world. So we know that that particular monotheistic belief system, what is referred to as a religion, was based upon the principles of the galactic central sun. That's what we was talking about, referred to as our time. It was represented the healing rays of the central, of the central sun. Um, um, and the Minoan, um, like we said, or the Cretans, or later known as the Greeks, like we said, the name was um, Alcyon. This explains why Atan, um, you know, that name traveled, you know, like we said, from the Hebrew into Adane, into the Greek Adonis, you know, which, like we said, basically means Lord, Master, Son. We're all talking about the same thing because, you know, Adonis uh, was um, the annual re uh, renewed, ever useful vegetation god a life, death, rebirth deity whose nature was tied to the calendar. Well, that sounds very familiar to uh, all saw as well as also Jesus. And you know, all saw, you know, was um, the father for uh, Heru, who was, Heru was the incarnation of all saw, hence Jesus. Um, later on, um, in the mythology, um, being taught, of course, from our um, time 2,000 years ago. So Adonis was a borrowing from the um, Semitic word Adon, meaning master or lord, which is related to um, Adonai. And really, uh, they still use it um, in some sense today. Um, as a matter of fact, if you go to the story, uh, the Syrians, uh, the Syrian, um, teach that um, Dias, or uh, Dias, struck the tree with an arrow, and whereupon it burst open, and Adonai, or Adonis, excuse me, emerged. And well, the same thing about Jesus died on a, on a tree. You know, um, that's Acts 5.30. You know, the God of our Father raises up Jesus whom he slew and hung on a tree. You know, it, was not even a, it wasn't even called a cross, per se, um, in his first um, depiction. You know, and that was to get the understanding of, um, of these correlation between these mythologies. And for those that want to get more understanding a great book is the bible myths by um tim w down that's d-o-a-n-e you know, right um check that book out very uh, powerful as far as explaining the various mythologies coming from the, from the various cultures of the world and how they all correlate and compare all right so when you look at the great hymns of Atan by um, Unk Aten, um, Amenhotep the fourth, as he was called, um, who said in the, you know, uh, 1300, you know, BC, um, you see that in the temple of Ye, um, on the West Wall, we had that um, adoration of our time. And I'm gonna read some of it. Adoration of Ra Eru Kahuti, who rejoice in the light land. In his name, Shu, who is the Atan. So Shu is Atan. Now who is Shu? Shu was the first begotten son of Atan. Who was that too? Atan? was the first to emerge from out the primordial waters of Nu, or Nu, all right? So 
by 10 would be the father and Shu would be the son. So this story is told over again, but this is once again thousands of years or over a thousand years um, before um, the biblical um, story. Uh, Shu is the personification of air, meaning Shu is the breath of life that is spoken of within the biblical text, which is the word made flesh, which is what we refer to as Jesus. But what is Jesus' name in Hebrew? It's Yahshua. Well, Atun's name is also Shua. So this is the reason why you worship Yahshua, because it is our turn. Shu. All right? And it says that Shu, who is the Aten, living forever, the great living Aten, who is in Jubilee, Lord of all that the dis surrounds, Lord of the sky, Lord of the earth. Lord of the house of the Aten, in Akhet Aten, adoration of the king of Upper and Lower Egypt, who lives by my yacht, the law of the two lands. Nefekeparo, Ra, soul one of Ra, the son of Ra. And remember, once again, this is the son of God, who lives by my yacht. Lord of crowns, of Aten, great in his lifetime, and of his beloved, great queen. Lady of the two lands, Nefer, Nefer, Aten, Nefeti, who lives in health and youth forever, the visor, the fan bearer, or the Right of the king, he say to him, and Aten as Ra with this course um, states, "Splendor, you raise your hands, light to the sky, um, light land of the sky, O living Aten, creator of life, you are dawn in the eastern light land. You fill every land with your beauty, noon." Dominion, you are beauteous, mighty and radiant, raised high over every land. Your rays embrace the land to the limits of all that you have made. Being Ra, you reach their end. You bend them for your beloved son. Though you are far, your rays are on earth. Though seen by them, your course is unknown. All right. Earth is the darkness as if death, the sleeper, or as in the chambers, had covered not seeing the other. One can steal the goods from under the head. They do not notice. Every lion coming from his den, the serpent bites. Darkness hovers. Earth is solid for the creator rest in the light land. At dawn, you have risen in the light land to shine as the autumn of daytime. You dispel the dark and cast your rays. The two land celebrates them. Awaken, they stand on their feet. You have made them get up. You wash and dress. They wash and dress, their arms raise in adoration to your parents. Now, of course, that's where you see Ankhaten, his children, Nefertiti, raising their hands to the sun, and the rays of the sun is coming down, you know, um, with the unk symbol at the end of the rays, and the rays are coming down also like hands, and the unk symbols is specifically going to the nose, showing that there's a life connection between um, the sun and not just the sun that we see, which act as a magnifying glass, but for the rays 
of this sun, of this central sun, which is called Alcyon, um, of which that, once again, um, is also cosmic light, which is being delivered to planet Earth. All right? So this is what he's referring to. And so they raise their hands, in other words, to receive. All right? And the entire land set out to work. All cattle are satisfied with their slaughter. The trees and the grass become green. Birds fly from their, from their nests, their wings praising your car. And gain animal frisks on their hooves. Or that fly that flutters live when you're dawn for the ships fear downstream and back upstream. Roads lie open when you rise. The fish in the river darts before you. Your rays penetrate the great green deep. Now, and there's, and there's much, much more, but I, I want to say this one, because this is important too, because Unten even got into the science on how the sun um, helps with the manufacturing uh, of the physical body and also of reproduction. And this is called the child. He says, an old you who makes sperm grows on women, who creates people from sperm, who feeds the son in his mother's womb, and who soothes him to steal his tears. You nurse in the womb, giver of breath to nurture all creatures. When the child emerges from the womb to breathe on the day of his birth, you open his mouth wide to supply his needs. All right, so, um, and this, if you understand what is going on, that these hymns becomes the great hymns called the Psalms in the Bible. And we know that because you can read um, the great hymn of our time and compare it to Psalms 104. And, and scholars have spoken about this. You know, many people have pointed out um, the numerous similarities between the Hebrew or Aramaic hymns, Psalms 104 and the great hymns of Aten, um, composed by Aten. And um, Psalms 104 is attributed to the great um, prophet Moses, who has also been identified as none other than um, Umar. Yeah. I'll put it this way. Um, Ahmed Osman of Egypt, um, he stated that Akhenaten was Moses of the Old Testament. Okay? So, um, and that he was the real author of the first three of the Ten Commandments, um, the condensed form of which that the monotheistic belief to which he added the seven-day um, uh, Sabbath from a much older um, Sumerian theology and the seven other commandments we borrow from the Egyptian Book of the Dead. All right? Now, of course, we know that book was basically the Confessions of Mayat, which also referred to the Negative Confessions, this moment. Uh, we refer to them as the Cardinal um, Virtues, the 40 two cardinal virtues. Um, the action was part of 77, you know, some say, but we actually found that it actually was 147 um, confessions of Mayat. All right? And that this is part of what it was coming down to. So after 30 years, all right, this, this is what he goes into. Um, he speaks about the similarities between um, the two, and that that Akhenaten wasn't killed, 
and that he was exiled for 30 years. And that um, Akhenaten, who was Moses, returned to Egypt and led his extended family and monotheistic uh, followers into the land of Median, now referred to as Saudi Arabia. All right. Um, later, descendants of his group moved to Jordan and from Jordan invaded um, Canaan to become the nation of what we refer to as Israel. All right. Uh, which the word Israel means to ascend to God. So it's not a tribe, it's a thing that you do. All right? And how do you ascend to God? By raising yourself up. Uh, Masons refer to it as at a 90 degree perpendicular level. Well, that 90 degree for you is your Kuntalini being risen up through your spinal column. Okay? No longer. Um, as a horizontal uh, animal, but now as a vertical God. All right, this is the symbology. Now, when we do the similarities, which I'm gonna go over now. All right, now of course, like you said, um, um, that was based on um, Akhmad from Osman, you know, which has some validity, but we also see that um, Akhenaten also was David, a Dawi, Dawu, um, and Davi on um, the DVD, which becomes T U T, which is Tut. And then, of course, you have Tut or Tut Moses. All right, so we also know that is a correlation too. And in particular, we have Thutmose the third. Um, and see, really, um, 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 Tim, you have been actually Thutmose the sixth. And he came from that same bloodline of the Kushites, the Nubians. All right. <laughs> Now, not only do you compare um, Psalms 104, I believe that it's also Psalms 110 too. Now, and there's several more. And between Unk Anten, who's known as Amenhotep IV, his father Amenhotep III, um, they're the ones in which that, when you read the Bible in particular about Proverbs, Psalms, the Songs of Solomon, this is where it really comes from. It's from them. Right? So, when you do your information, your research, um, your studies, I should say, um, keep these things in mind because this, this is essential um, to understand all right. Now, um, brother L, you got anything you want to um add? Yes, uh, you said that uh, Tubbosy the third and uh, Akhenaten, uh, both, uh, they both got those uh, in the Bible. Uh, those were the um, 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 where they got the stories from. The Moses story, right, right, okay, right, right. Plagiarization from the top Moses well, story. Well, I mean, the, right. Well, the Moses story is a compilation. His birth story comes from um, Sargon the first of Acadia. Um, you know, a thousand years before the Moses story, um, Sargon was said in birth to be sealed in a basket filled with slime and then sent down the river and found by a royal family. That's the exact same story that we find a thousand years later in the Bible, in the Old Testament, um, in the book of Exodus, uh, where it speaks about the same thing. Hmm. You know, so, I mean, we got to come to realization that these are stories, but it has a principle behind it. What is it that's, um, what is the basket that's filled with slime that is sent down the river? 
Well, that's the sperm. The sperm is encased inside of semen. And that's the slime. And mm. it's sent down the river, which is what? The vaginal canal. <laughs> mm. in, order, in order to be met by the um, the royal family, in particular the queen um, or the princess, which is the female egg. Not right. In order to right, in order to produce life. So I mean, the symbology. Understand that um, that this is what they understood. This is what they was taught, referring to. But people missed the point because they're so busy trapped into um, you know something outside of themselves. Right. You know, it's a beautiful story when you read about you know Moses splitting the Red Sea, not realizing that the heart that beats within you splits the Red Sea. You know. Um, Every moment or so, you got four chambers in your heart, and you get and they go to and fro. So that's the splitting of the Red Sea. You know, we thinking that it's the splitting of the Red Sea over there in Egypt. You know, mm-hmm. going into Saudi, um, um, Saudi Arabia, that's the that's the that's the Reed Sea or the Red Sea. It is over there. <coughs> You know, so and, um, mm-hmm. so dealing with the uh, when you said as above, so it's below. That's dealing, uh, that's, right. uh, that's what a concept of uh, of uh, as it is in heaven, as, as, it, as, as, as it is on earth, as it is in heaven, and the prayers, right. gospel prayers. Exactly. The same exactly. Thing. Right. Right. Exactly. The high and lower self. Essentially, exactly. That, that, that's that's the best way to take it. You know, that's what makes sense. You know, um, any other way, you'd be ninety years old still listening to the understanding of what's going on, and still don't have no better understanding of the physical body, what it's capable of, the power of the mind. You know, your purpose or mission on planet Earth. You came here just as confused as your ass left. <laughs> yeah, I was uh, watching uh, Kenneth Copeland last night, and my mother mm-hmm. was also watching it also. And she was kind of right. surprised that I watched Kenneth Copeland. Right. And I said, well, my understanding of Kenneth Copeland is, is different than yours. Right. So every time they're talking about, well, God told me to, I'm looking at him, him, his higher self was telling his lower self to stop stop eating so much and therefore you wouldn't have diabetes or eating the wrong foods all the time. That that was, you know, that's the understanding I got of it, you know, or from it. But most of them don't take it that way. They think they're talking about somebody outside of themselves, someone up in the clouds somewhere. The, the, the right, exactly. European and the crowd, you know, telling them this. Right, 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 and still waiting for a European to come out the sky, you know, to make all our conditions right. And I mean, even now, you know, for those who study, you know, a lot of the UFO, you know, it seems that we're in the same predicament again. Now, we done transfer that from white Jesus to now a savior of UFO, you know, um, you know, in the same regard. You know, in some aspects, you know, but there's come a time when we have to become responsible for ourselves. And, you know, you uh, know, as they say, gear up, you know, right. Um, put that arm, put that armor of God on, you know, and what we mean by armor of God is, is quite simple. You strengthen your auric cell. Do the things in which that, um, that better you work on what betters you. Right. Yeah, you know we know that the life story, you know, uh, you know of Moses is, you know, somewhat fictitious. I mean, the word Moses itself means being drawn forth from water. Well, I mean, that's that's how we came. I mean, the word semen, see man, <laughs> you know, uh, you know, we came forth from the water, the fluids of the body. 
the water's the mm-hmm. life. You know, that's the cerebral fluid. That's the prostate fluid. That's the spinal fluid. All them fluids is what make up the sperm. You know, makes up the semen. You know, so those the that's the water of life. That's what means Moses being drawn forth from water. We're all a Moses. You know, in that regard. When we look at it in that way. You know, the um the title, um, Mark Heru. You know, um you know, is really the origin of the corruption of the word Moses. You know, the term Makehu or Moshi or Mashu, you know, is the Tamarian word which means the true of voice. One who speaks the divine um law. Mm-hmm. Um you know, that's that was you know, Tahut was known as the divine spokesperson of Ra. You know, he's the original market rule, you know, true voice or word. And, of course, we see that later on, you know, in Exodus 4.10, where it says, and Moses said unto the Lord, O oh Lord, I'm not eloquent, neither heretofore, nor since that have spoken unto thy servant, but I am slow to speech and of a slow tongue. Yeah, 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 that's, that's good, but next thing you know, uh, the nigga is saying um, he's up in federal faith on let my people go. What happened? You know, what happened in two chapters? Because in that same chapter, he's telling, you know, that um, Aaron, um, um, God, send Aaron for me. Because I can't speak eloquent. You know, he, he can speak for me. You know, then all of a sudden you don't see Aaron. What happened? Right. You know, so... You know, next thing you know, he's the one, you know, getting it in with the Pharaoh. You know, you know, uh, by um, I think by Exodus nine, you know, he's saying, you know, he's telling the Pharaoh, let my people go. You know, so, I mean, this this is showing you, you know, these stories, like for example, in the book of the Cow of Heaven, which is basically the destruction of man. Ra asks, asks Tahuti um, to come with me to the mountainous region where men and women would not see them. Well, hmm. remember, Moses went, Moses went up to Mount Sinai to right. receive the Ten Commandments from God. Ra takes on the form of a God of light and is thus called Ra Aku. Tahuti goes up to the mountain to see the God of light. Well, that's just like um, uh, Moses seeing God in the burning bush. Mm-hmm. Oh, God, he sent it over to the crown chakra. <clears throat> right, exactly. Ra directs Tahuti to write down what is the spirit, what is the spirit world. You know, Tahuti is given the title on the Mayat. Or strives of the divine law. Now, Tahuti is instructed to become the law giver. Well, God told Moses that he's now the law giver. The Ten Commandments can strive in stone. Ra um, makes Tahuti his deputy on earth and gives Tahuti an assistant. <laughs> this assistant is the divine um, baboon. Call Anna. A N A N. Anna. Well, guess what? Anna was corrupted into Aaron. <laughs> so when you see the depiction of Tahuti sitting in a sacred um, bark or boat with the baboons, Anna next to him, you're actually viewing uh, Moses and Aaron. Or Makahu. Or Makaru and Anum. Hmm. So see, these, 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 this is what we're talking about, and and you know what what is it that we're really talking about here? Because the, right. because the Tamarians use symbology because they knew that a picture spoke a thousand words, which we say all the time, but yet we don't look for a thousand words in their meanings 
um, when we look at these, uh, why would it take such amount of time to have this type of information, so much knowledge and information, you know, um, put on walls, you know, that last, you know, thousand, four thousand years or more, if there was not something in which that they was intended for you to uh, realize that there's a story, that there's much more to this story. Right. Now, when we understand that Tahuti governs the pineal gland and that the substance secreted therefrom, which is serotonin and melatonin, and that the melatonin goes into production of melanin, you know what I'm saying? We understand that Tahuti, which is Makahu, the pineal gland is stimulated by the light of the sun, which is raw. And because of the stimulation of, of um, Ra's um, energy, which is solar light, the pineal gland is activated and can, can and, um, secrete um, the divine food, which is melatonin, serotonin, um, DMT, penoline, for the body cells to feed off of. Um, the body of the melanin is called the um, sac, um, the sacred um, aru. You know, so we, we have to start breaking this information down mm -hmm. so that we come to a clearer um, understanding of what we're reading, that it's more than just stories. It's more than just saying and debating about, um, you know, uh, if Moses split the Red Sea uh, 4,000 years or not. Or, you know, uh, you know, um, who was it that found Moses, you know, um, in the river? <laughs> you know, right, these are right. the things, you know, that Negroes get stuck on. You know, See, when, the Bible is a um, very good book. If you, if you understand right. It. And it's, it's a well, very that's why, well, that's why Prophet Abu Jali said, don't throw away your Bible. Because there's keys to it. I mean, why do you think Masons um, still use um, the King James Version to this day? You know, there's something in it. You know, I know people want to get mad. You know, they come into this knowledge and then, you know, they're trying to throw the baby out with the bathwater. No, you got to make you got to make sure that this comes to understanding because without one you wouldn't be able to connect the pieces to the other in order to explain what's really taking place, like what we've just been doing here for the last hour. You know, that's what we've been doing here for the last hour, you know, is connecting the dots to this information. Coming from the um, Akna and Hymns, um, coming from the Bible, you know, these things are very important in order to get an understanding you know? So that's why uh, uh, when you read the uh, books like the Secret Doctrine 1 and 2 with Madame Blavatsky uh, dealing with uh, Brahmas, uh, most people don't know that's Abraham. Actually, what they're yeah, talking exactly. about. Exactly. Uh, or right. the, uh, the Abraham story, right? Yeah, is based on that. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You know, but that's uh, some of the get this some from the uh, the Bhagavad Gita of the Hindu you know, Bible you know, and the Holy Bible, and even the the, the Quran. The you know, the Quran uh, is also very uh, astronomical. Once you get to right. understand the astrotheology of things, right? The, the astrotheology, the, the logical science, you know. Right. And once you get into that, you know, the, the, those are very good books: the, the Quran, the Holy Quran, and the uh, the Holy Bible, the Bhagavad Gita, and the Zendavesta. Uh, Vestas. You know, I mean, you no, know, but because everybody's getting the wrong. They took it out in a literal sense. And always going inside themselves for the answer. I mean, not inside themselves, outside of themselves for the answer. 
That's what mm-hmm. happened with Dan. You know, so we're seeking the Christ uh, consciousness within themselves. And this is this is the problem. Right. right. You know, like, uh, as he's screaming ill, peace be upon him. And he said that uh, you see a lot of those uh, Christians with their Bibles or going in and the church, church and coming right outside of them, by, uh, coming right out of the church and don't know, don't understand that Bible no more before they went inside, you know. That's true. You no, know, that's, that's no. So I mean, uh, uh, same thing. You, you, I, I say the same thing with the uh, the Moors with the Circle Seven Quran. You know, uh, go under the temple and have no more real understanding of that Quran before they went in there, and they come out. Right. Right. The, the same, the same, same scenario. You know, and uh, the uh, same mind control system. Uh, Christianity, uh, uh, Hindu, Hinduism, uh, Judaism, and Islam. You know, right. the same thing. And they deal, exactly. they all been reduced to a mind control institutions. All of them. Yeah, yeah. A lot, a lot of people don't like me saying that, but you no. Know. Oh, no, they don't. Because then, well, brother. Uh, Brother Eldon, how can you be um, a Moorish American and dealing with Moorish science and you don't believe um, that the Holy Quran, Circle 7, which is based on the Bible, talks about Jesus and and all these (laughs) other prophets, brother? (laughs) (laughs) That'd be the question they were asked. Mm-hmm. And I, I, I then what I would do, I would try to break it down to them. Right. And they, they still won't want one. You no. Know, I know. Because they stuck. Exactly. All right. So, yeah. like, like, they stuck because allegedly, like the Book of Psalms, it was written by several different writers, allegedly. Right? I mean, it was composed between a period of about 1,000 years from the time of Moses which was supposed to be around 1500 B.C. to the time of Ezra, 450 B.C., and that Moses wrote one psalm, which is probably Psalms 90. Um, um, Asaph wrote two. Um, the son of Korah was credited with 11 psalms. Solomon and Ezra was believed to have written two psalms each. David is the author of at least, I think, 70 psalms. Um, if you go to, uh, I think that's in Second Psalm, um, Samuel twenty-three two, Act one sixteen, Matthew twenty-two forty-one forty-six. You know, so this is who they state wrote it. But when you go and actually do your research, you know, um, you find out that you're really looking at. Unc Anton, and you're looking at his father, Amenhotep the Third. You know, um, uh, who did these writings, and and who was the son? They're saying that who was the son of um, Nefertiti and Unc Anton is is Tutankhamen, King Tut. Huh. You know. You know, so you're looking at three generations, you know, of writers, you know, in which that this is where these writings come from. And who composed it was allegedly rabbis, allegedly 72 rabbis who formed and put together what is now called the Old Testament. Um, And they was um, and this happened. You know, at the um, Alexandria Library, you know, during the time when Alexander, the so-called great, you know, um, came into Egypt. It was after 332 um, B.C. You know, so these particular things occurred hundreds of uh, years later, 
as far as composite, mm-hmm. you know, but they have mistaken that it occurred, you know, much earlier, you know, by these particular um, alleged characters or, you know, people who supposedly have existed. But when you go and do your research, you find that they don't exist and that the so-called Jewish people who converted um, after the burning of um, Jerusalem, 70 um, AD, um, these converts, these Russian converts called um, the Ashkenazims, all right, um, was looking for a history to draft themselves mm-hmm. onto. Exactly, yes. The, uh, uh, last Saturday, I wore nothing but black. I even had a black turban on. And my sister was asking me, mm-hmm. why, you got on, why do you have on so much black? I said, well, uh, uh, to have my vibratory spiritual, spiritual rate connect with the planet Saturn. I said, look over there. Right. You see all them Jews over there? Our so-called Jews over there? All of them have black on. And she asked me why. I said, because they're doing the same thing, but they don't know that they're doing the same thing. I said, a few of their rabbis know. But they are keeping that right. from their congregation. Mm-hmm. They don't. Most of them don't know why they're wearing black on Saturday. It's dealing with right. uh, the planet Saturn, which the a lot of their philosophies, philosophies are based on, because they acquired the Saturnian philosophy. Right. But I'm doing it because I'm dealing with, with the uh, the yeah, my spiritual vibratory rate will. Coincide with the atmosphere and the, or the atmosphere of the universe and the cosmic. Right, and plus, right, and plus, Saturn deals with structure and discipline. Yes, you know, and it takes discipline to not eat from Friday six o'clock in the evening to six o'clock Saturday evening for that twenty-four hour um, span every week, at least one twenty-four hours. Um, period to cleanse your body out, you know that's discipline, you know, and that's what they are showing or demonstrating, you know. That's the reason why Saturn is used as such. It's called the Black Planet in the occult. Right. It's, it's not in a negative sense like a lot of people think it is. Right. You no, know, because black, you know, means supreme balance. In, in um in a in uh, most sense, right. Mhm. So like I said, they took it to be. It's not. It, when you say balance, you have to say it's not all. Uh, what you mean, dead and, and death and evil and and so forth. You know, no, it has a balance to it as well. You know. It's like when I asked you one time about the black fairs, and I asked you, I said, well, why do you the grand with the black fairs? And you explained to, to me because it means that you have killed off your lower self. Right. So the higher self can remain in control. Mm-hmm. That's right. That's right. Mm-hmm. All right, for those that have any questions for us, give us a call. At six two six four one four thirty five thirty five. That's six two six four one four thirty five thirty five. Once again, that's six two six four one four thirty five thirty five. All right. Uh, we have a caller. Area code seven four zero. You're on the air. Peace and blessings to my brothers and everybody who's listening. Peace. 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 And. Uh, Many, many abundance uh, throughout the weekend, a, a wonderful weekend. Thank you. Same to you, Thank bro. You. Uh, Appreciate you, brother. I, I got a question. Uh, I, I heard the word Saturn brought up, and I haven't studied enough in this particular area on the question I'm about to ask you, but are there people on existing planets like Venus and Mars and, and Saturn and Titan and places like that and folks in other galaxies that uh, yes. NASA hasn't revealed to us that 
And if so, where can I find this information out at? Um, definitely. Um, well, I mean, YouTube right now is, is a beast on exposing some things, but there's some disinformation and misinformation that's there too. But um, you can still check out some information, like, for example, the sister who's 1.5 billion years old that they found on more, well, excuse me, on the moon. Um, also, uh, there's artifacts, of course, and pyramids and all types of, you know, uh, temples and structures that they have found on Mars. You know, if you go to Sidonian site on Mars, I mean, you got the face there, you have pyramids, glass structures, you know, all types of things there, you know. So, yes, we know for sure about Mars. Um, that there was life. Matter of fact, the Amazulu people, you get the book called the Zulu Bone Oracle. The Zulu Bone Oracle. All right. It's a um, very hard it's a very very hard book to get. But it's called the Zulu Bone Oracle. Um all right, Credo Credo Mutua, he does a a um portion of the book. And he speaks about the word Amazulu, that the word Amazulu means, all right, that the word Amazulu means sky people. Uh -huh. And that these sky people came originally from, well, not originally, but from prior to come to Earth, they dwelt on a red planet. And actually that, that was their sixth time jumping from planets. Are moving from various planets, all right? And he said that they are, and, and he says that the Amazulu people are those sky people that came from Mars. So this is what got me is that when David Icke interviews Creed Moutoir, in his biggest secret book, he starts to state that white people came from Mars, and that was bullshit. Creed Moutoir never said that. Because you get the Zulu Bona Oracle, you would get what Krimutwa actually says about the Amazulu people coming from the Red Planet. And he said because okay. of the catastrophe in which that took place, it destroyed a lot of the surface dwellers and dwellings. All right? In which that prior to that destruction, the men impregnated the women and the women was able to transform their bodies into ships, light vehicles called macabres. All right, and he was able to travel to planet Earth. Now, this is what Creed Matois states. So, um, yes, we know that there's an extraterrestrial presence right here on planet Earth because um, we have several tribes of so-called black folks that say that they come from these particular um, places. All right, Creed Matois verifies that through the Zulu Bone Oracle book. But, of course, we have Robert Temple's book, Serious Mysteries, in which that um, he states about the Dogon. And that the Dogon says that originally they come from a planet um, near Sirius A, Sirius B, Sirius C, and even Sirius D. All right? So we know about Polo Tolo, Ziggy Tolo, and Emiya. All right? But there's also a Sirius D that they're still searching for. All right? They found Emiya okay. in 1990. They found Emiya in 1995. Well, Emiya becomes the planet of the crossing, which is called Nubiru today, in which that goes around and comes near us every 3,600 years. This is the second sun that's in the sky. Is, is that sun right. visible or or has it passed? Yes, it's visible. What 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 is the best time to actually uh, see it? Early in the morning, right after um, sunrise. Oh, you can see it right after sunrise. So, as as the sun is rising, we we can see it. Um, it will become more apparent um here within these next um few months or so. Yes. It okay. has already been seen. It has already been seen all over the world. Okay. 
you know. Is that is that yeah. the same thing that I remember a couple of weeks ago you played a uh, a scene from Doctor Delbert Blair, and he talked right. about something about a sighting. Is that what you're talking about, or is it something different? No, he he's talking. He was he, Doctor Deborah Blair said this is going to be three sons. Oh. He said the second one is already the second one is already being shown now, and I'm telling you which the what that son is is Sirius C from Sirius because we travel around in the elliptical pattern um, every twenty five thousand years. Um, our solar system is Sirius. We travel um, um, you know around each other. So this particular um, son has a tendency of coming um, into view. You know, now okay. he said there's a third son. He said there's a third son. Now, you know, that's, that's what he was talking about. You know, uh, we need to go back and investigate even more about this third son. You know, um, you know we don't know what this third son is. Okay. You know, you know, that's something that interesting in order to go and find more information about. Mm-hmm. You're right. You know? Definitely but, right about that. Yeah. Yeah, because he said that, um, as a matter of fact, he said we should be seeing it this year, going into 2017. Hmm. You know, so, yeah, there's books on this information, plenty of books. Um, I gave you two for right now. You can get the Pale Fox. You can get um, um, the Sirius. Um, oh, man, it's by Murray. Uh, I can't remember the uh, full title, but it's, it's another book on Sirius, but it's by Murray. Um, uh, Sirius Connections, that's the name of Sirius Connections, and it's by uh, Murray. You can get that book. And, uh, okay. Um, uh, Rezo, uh, Rezo, uh, I think his name is Mark Rezo. Um, he wrote books on the Mars, um, Sidonia information. Um, is R E S O, if I'm not mistaken, Rezo, uh, Mark, and uh, you can check out his information. Um, he got a lot of information. You know, so yeah, there's, there's, there's many books that's been written about this, and this is more so, I, I would say more so um, verifiable. Um, there's other books like Val Valerian Works, Matrix 1, Matrix 2, Matrix 3, Matrix 4, Matrix 5. You know, so, yeah, yeah, plenty. Now, uh, he also mentioned Dr. Deborah Blair and what you played about... Uh, about the people that run this world, I think he mentioned the name Draconian. Is, right. Is that their right. time is up. Yeah. Right. And, the reptilian. Yeah. Uh, who would be the enforcer that will come and say you got to get you got to get the hell up out of here? If not, um, yeah, we don't Syrian. put these hands on you. Yeah, he's talking about the Syrian beings. Oh. Syrian? Like the Syrian beings. Another oh. group of, um, of of said black folks that's coming from the star system series. The dog star. Um, they're referred to um, as the, uh, you know, uh, the Anunnakian. You know, um, Zachariah simply speaks about the Anunnaki within his book, The Twelfth Planet. Um, Dr. Malakazi York speaks about it within um, his book, The Man from, from Rest. You know, Man from Planet Rest. You know, so okay. it, it's, it's so many books. Yeah. Yep. I, uh, I definitely appreciate it, brother. And uh Oh you're welcome. Appreciate you. Know, you, you, like you gave me enough to chew on. 
All right. Watch the toes in the house. All right. Hey, I'll tell you, watch the toes right. each. Hey, hey, I'll tell you, watch the toes each. Say what? All right. We got area code 410. Area code 410. You're on the air. What's going on, brothers? Islam, Islam. Honor Islam. to the panel. Islam. How you doing? All right. Oh, um, man, this is this a uh, this a wonderful time to be. Well, it's always a wonderful time to be alive, but you know, just just reflecting on 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 uh, we got technology now. We, well, we always got internal with technology, but just. You know, sometimes you gotta reflect on, on, on the struggle that our ancestors did before us. You know, uh, thousands of years and you know hundreds. Just, just simple stuff like, like, uh, um, the law books and everything. You know, like Noble Noble Drew I'd lead just laying down the bricks for us. Just the, the. To, to cut the slack off and you know the sweat, so I, you know I was just sitting back and thinking like, like can you imagine sitting in a library reading the UCC to your eyes pop out? <laughs> you know, yeah, that's a lot of information. Just you know, I try sitting there one day and I mean for eight hours and I was like, I mean I'm, I'm about studying, but you know, the the road already paid off for us. But anyway, man, right. um, yeah, uh, I was, um, I was looking up the, uh, the Beyonce video y'all talked about, uh, last week, mm-hmm. or whenever it was, and, you know, mm-hmm. um, I, I really don't, uh, watch too many, too many social events and, and all that, but, um, I definitely gotta get my head take my head off the uh, bay because uh, right. the, the position she in, you, you already know. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, so yeah. Not not really too much to say on that, but uh, like, like what Paul Mooney say, um, uh, she up for her nigga check. You know, you get your nigga right, check. Right, right. <laughs> right. Yeah. 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 Um, she don't work for you. She done went from collecting nigga checks to not giving a damn, a, right? Give a damn about is she getting another nigga, uh, uh, nigga check? So. Because <laughs> 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 I think they, I think Hun Jay Z, um, then came to the conclusion that, um, that they can make money without, um, them anyway. Being that the music industry is falling, you know, and you know, it's garbage now. You know that they have found other ways of investing and other ways of getting. I mean, she put that video out. You know, in less than twenty four hours, had over five million um, hits. You know, she if they monetize that, you know, shit, that's um more than a half a million dollars right there that she already made just off the clicks from Google Accent. Mhm. Wow. You know. Oh. Right. So. Right, right. So, so, uh, and that was just off of one song. You know, that means that um, that song already went gold <laughs> already off of just the damn hits, off the damn um, views. And that had nothing to do with, um, with sex. Right, straight paper click, huh? Right, exactly. And that going straight into the bank account, deposited, <laughs> and... And um um and not waiting for no damn uh accounting or well you know uh some other you know shit to take place no mm-hmm. no other middlemen to take place that <laughs> way you know yeah that, that was another thing that blew my mind um man when you said they 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 vegan like oh man right. it's cool to be mm-hmm. vegan now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That that came out um last year that they went vegan. Yeah, a year before last. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because man, this this matrix is 
is making as well. Today, um, well, that's what I was saying is that you know, um, before we had the music artists in the '90s, you know, influencing the mind of the generations into consciousness. Now we have the grassroots um, people, you know, who's putting out the videos through YouTube, who's influencing the minds of the of the of the, of the uh, media and in particular of the musicians and artists um, now. It you know? Well because to today, um, I was eating some raw broccoli, and and the dude I was with, we, we, we went out to eat some lunch, and um, he was like, oh, he eats weird. And it's coming from somebody that had two strokes and eating on fried chicken. I was like, man, you got to be kidding me. Huh. <laughs> That's something. Exactly. That's something. Mm. Right. At least, at least learn how to eat right for your blood type, but then going to criticize you, huh? And over there, right. and over there, done, done had, done, done had the um strokes. Okay, I got you. Right. Right, but you know, it's, it's all divine. Everything is everything. Like uh, a couple people say, you know, yeah. What, what you think about? What you think about? Um, ancient Egypt, ancient God of Egypt, and, and I, uh, I get off air with that one. All right, y'all take it. Right, what they was asking you about it? That the, the movie coming out? That what you mean? Yeah, yeah. I, I want to. Um, I, yeah, I, I couldn't believe yeah. what I saw, well, I man. But um, I was wondering what you think about that. Oh, it came out what Friday, right? Oh, I had no idea. I just saw the problem. Um, I think it did, yeah. Yeah, I think it did. Uh, either come out this Friday one. It's one of the two, but um, it's garbage. Um, dude, director already stated that he couldn't, you know, for the amount of money that he was spending to make the movie, which was um, in the hundreds of millions, um, that type of epic, I think it was $140 million, um, he couldn't afford to put um, Negroes <laughs> Um, in the um, um, to be cast in the movie like that, so he can come and um see it because they wouldn't come and see it. So, uh, that's essentially what he said. You know, I'm paraphrasing, uh-huh. of course. But, um, so that's the reason why um, it's not much of us in there in any shape, form, or fashion. You know, um, I mean. I, I mean, I'm not gonna go and waste my time watching it. If I see, if right. I see it, it's gonna be on black market, you right. know, uh, free of charge, you know. <laughs> yeah, hey, yeah. yeah. And then I, then, I then, then we'll do a show on it and um, break down the metaphysics behind it because right. um, it still it still look like it has some metaphysical principles in it, even though um, they lying to it visually. Right, it's always about us, but, enough, uh, but he can't have too many of us starring in the movie. So, you know. Right, exactly. Right, but but yet, you know, but Hollywood have always done that. You know, um, they yeah. always, I mean, shit, I think you see um, Wayne, uh, what's his name? John Wayne, he played Genghis Khan. <laughs> All right, we seen um, Elizabeth Teller. She played uh, Cleopatra. Mm-hmm. These are melanated people. So, I mean, right, right. We seen you know, game we time. seen the European. Right, we seen the European in Mummy. I think it was Mummy Return, Mummy One, and Mummy Return. Um, yeah. um play M Hotel. Hey, you know. So I mean, this is not the first time that they've done this type of thing. I mean, hell, we seen damn, uh, uh, um, uh, what's his name? Tom Cruise play the Last Samurai. Right, right, and um, yeah, Paul Mooney said that um, Tom Cruise played the Last Samurai, and, and Daniel Banderas played the Mexican. <laughs> exactly. Mm-hmm. You know, so. So this is the nonsense that you know that Hollywood has been um, producing since the you know nineteen um, twenties. Just the foolishness. 
You know, yeah. so we're looking at you know, over you know over um you know eighty years worth of of um, bullshit. You know, in, in most yeah. regards. You know, That's so you can't terrific. tell me right. So you can't tell me that Denzel Washington wouldn't have sold as much as you know as these dudes. You gonna tell me that? Um, hell, the highest paying actor um actors is Denzel and them um. Oh, um, what's his name? Um, man, they always get him to um play the God and President on roles. Um, my man, what, um, Morgan Freeman. Yeah, Morgan Freeman, exactly. You know, you gonna tell me that um people went to went to go see this if they was in in these particular roles on cast? You gonna tell me that? <laughs> As much money that these individuals done bought into Hollywood? Boatload. Exactly. Ain't nobody want to hear that nonsense. You know? Yeah, now you could have had no, um, probably no new person. No new? Of course not. You know what I'm saying? But hell, uh, we know that's nonsense. Shit, I ain't see... Shit, um, when I went to the um, joint to see Star Wars, that shit was packed. Mm-hmm. You know? And the brother was, you know, was on um, one of the main characters. Wasn't the best yeah. main character, you know, as far as that was concerned. You know, but still, you know, he was dead. You know, and even then, it still reach box on um, box office. It's still a box office smash because of the you know of 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 the name itself, Star Wars. You know, but I don't think um, Hollywood would have had a problem. This director wouldn't have had a problem if he would have um, had um, cast uh, recognizable so-called blacks more in these particular positions. There's no way that he would have had um, a problem um, still being um, a smash hit. Now he got us, you know, who are conscious, um, looking to boycott that shit, you know, and nobody, and you know, we're not going to go pay no money for that. No. I want red fat. You know? Right. Well, all right, I, I appreciate the answer. Um, oh, you know, on the topic of uh, videography, um, what happened with. Uh, Brief or breath. What, what was your documentary? Blow. Mm-hmm. Blow, blow. We're still working blow. on it. Yeah, we're gonna try to have it out before the end of the year. Hopefully, the end of the summer. Okay. All right. Thanks, bro. Hey, appreciate y'all. Appreciate it, right, bro. Yep, yep. This is the nonsense that's going on, brother L. Yeah, it is. Um, but of course, you know. I mean, what, what's your thoughts about the about about that as far as um um Hollywood um not casting any roles in the um that was I think it's called the gods of Egypt and all the gods yeah. of Europeans, you know, in Egypt. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know. What, what do you think about that nonsense, bro? Well, and I think well, I think it came out. I haven't even been keeping up with it because. You know, when I first seen it months and months ago last year, you know, I was like, uh, this is garbage. Even though, you know, when I seen the action, I'm like, okay. But when I seen that it was none of us, nowhere to be found, I'm like, oh, shoot, they done went wild with, you done went. Exactly. Hey, you're over there. Yeah, like you so. said, 80 years ago. Yeah. 80 years ago. Like I said, you said 80 years of bullshit, and you're you right on the money with that. You know? I mean, right. all the stories about us, but none of mm-hmm. us can star in those movies. You know, uh, just right. take you take uh, 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 Danny Glover, the actor. He's trying to be trying to uh, to get a movie made about the Haitian Revolt, right. but what, nobody's right. going to fund it. Hell no. Uh, right. uh, the actor so Michael J. White, uh, uh, right. trying to make the movie the, the more. Right. He's going to do the Right, exactly. Right. No, they they don't want to fund it, and then only no. s- 
stories that we keep getting over and over again with an all black cast is about some relationship um shit. That's it. Some comedy. That's it. You know, right, that's some it. comedy of relationship. Hell yeah, come and ride along too. Ride along five and six and you know what I'm saying? <laughs> oh, Furious Five and the shit. I think they have the Furious Ten now. Furious Five Ten. <laughs> some shit. You know, I mean, come on. Yeah, that's what we know how to fucking do is damn drive a car. <laughs> <laughs> or kill somebody. Or do a drive by on somebody. Yeah. Exactly. You know, so come on, this this is ridiculous. You know what I'm saying? We can't get nothing in which that deals with some real um science here. Uh, and and what's the reason for that? Why? Keep us from linking Why ourselves back to our ancestors. Well, too, we don't control the industry, you no. know, and and it seems that we care not to control the industry, but yet all the thing we want to do is complain. Look at this recent um complaining behind Negroes um at this last not the Grammy, but the, uh, what was it? The um, Emmy. The Emmy Awards. The Emmys, the Emmy Awards, you know, where they use our shit, our saw, which they call Oscar, but they're using our shit and then don't recognize us, you know, but use oh, you our shit. Oh, Academy Passing Awards? Our... Right, the Academy Awards, which is the Emmys, right. Right, and they're yeah. going to use the term Emmy as in emmy which is the symbol to the mother principle, and then show you our saw, they, which they refer to as Oscar. Mm-hmm. So Emmy is a form of our set. So that is also in our set that they damn basing their concept off of the damn award show, but then don't even have us in the motherfucker. And it was our damn concept, mental construct and archetypes. Mm-hmm. And but here you have Jada Pinkett, you have Will Smith, different other ones saying they're going to boycott the damn um, Emmys this year because they didn't, sh- you know, they didn't. There was no blacks. Um, nominated for any awards. Uh-huh. I mean, I mean, this is this this is it. I mean, I mean, that's what happens. I mean, of course, we have our own award shows, but nothing is on of um of that grand. And um, and this is the reason why they feel like they still have to continue going and supporting them, you know, in those particular endeavors. Sometimes you got to come to the point that we don't care about what they think. Um, and what they do, and we're going to continue doing what we're doing and moving and growing and building. And if we continue focusing ourselves with what we're doing, what they're doing, that shit will finally fall or either um, go small enough till they become minute, till they have no authority or, or any um, pull whatsoever um, when it comes, you know, in our own scenario. You know, this is the mm-hmm. problem, and, uh, and we know we can do this because this is the um, thing in which happened with Black Wall Street, you know, in the 1920s. You know, Tulsa, Oklahoma, Greenwood District, um, that's, you know, we talk about 600 businesses, 300, um, 36 blocks, you know, blown to bits. You know, laundry mats, movie theaters, courthouse, post offices, grocery stores. Law firms, sheriff department. Yeah, the, uh, the, a lot of people were saying that, uh, the, like, like, like Ice Cube, so he wasn't looking for nothing from them no way, you know. You know, so but right. but I bet he was looking, but he was looking for him to, uh, to, uh, to help him create that movie he made. So about damn his right. Story. I'm damn right, and that's exactly what happened. So, full of shit. right. Well, you can say that after the fact. I mean, yeah. Now you don't make the movie. You don't made your millions of dollars off of it. Um, you and Dr. Dre, you know, and um, that's good. You know, you know, y'all had a hand in it. You know, directing or whatever the case is. You know, and um, putting it together, able to you know, practice. You know, you know, put your son into you know position. Making your son a um actor now. Now he able to get um uh, uh, more roles as an actor. 
You know, you know, um what they what they call that brother L? Um <laughs> father, father, father steps or Yeah, they well they call it following in the father's footsteps, but um when it's when it's used in order to make sure you get, you know, um yourself you know, get your family members in, in certain positions, you know what I'm saying? It's called what? Not stipulations, but um now oh, well I can't remember the name of it right now, but uh, it was at his best, put it that way. <laughs> right? That, that Ice Cube son, of course, you know, O'Shea, you know, Junior got a chance to play his dad. You know, and um, the thing is, is that we're looking at, you know, it wasn't a bad movie. You know? Okay. Um, it was a clean movie, you know, considering what they spoke about. You know, even um, Concussion. You know, Will Smith was a um, was a decent good movie, you know, but neither one was nominated. But everybody thought for sure that it would be at least nominated, or at least put in some type of category. But it wasn't. Neither were they. Now, of course, you know, they say they don't give a damn or that they was boycotting, but yet, you know, y'all still working for these people in these, in, you know, in these arenas, you know, right. The Emmy and uh, you know the Emmy um, Council is made up of producers, writers, you know, uh, um, directors. You know, I'm pretty be pretty sure that you don't work with some of these people before in some type form or fashion. You know, you know, and I know in some ways that um, a lot of them are just rich people. That um that just don't give a damn. That's the way they was trying to make it seem. Right. You know? yeah. But who knows? That's what that was about. Right. 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 Hold on, brother. Yeah. We got another phone call. We got right. two zero nine. I'm two zero nine. You're on the line. Peace. 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 What's going on? Um, I've been calling your show for a while. I was wondering to know what the name of your show is. I just know I got it the number in my phone up in my phone and I never can talk <clears throat> get the title of the name of your show. The first world order. You said that's right. Okay, yeah, now I remember it's coming back to me. Okay. Cool. Did you have any questions? And, um, I, I, I do I do appreciate all that you've been doing. I've been listening to you for years, uh um Arlene Mel Bay. I've been listening to you for years and you did help me get through with my uh my foot in the medical uh field. I'm a medical assistant now and I wanna advance it and take it further. And with, with your help I, I really appreciate it. Deeply appreciate it. Well I appreciate you, bro, for listening to us, man. Thanks. Okay, this this is Maurice calling from California, and uh, I'm gonna let you guys handle what you got to do. All right. All right. Yeah. Thank you, Maurice. Right. Peace, Peace. 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 All right. We got area code eight zero three. Area code eight zero three. You on the air? Hey, peace and greetings to my brothers. Peace. 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 Well, How you doing, out? Well, the sisters who might be listening also. I'm great. You think about yourself, brother. Doing well. Doing well, guys. That's that's wonderful. That's wonderful. Um, I kind of had a uh, want to throw some something out there and see what your feedback was on this. I know we we speaking a lot of times about uh, we speak a lot of the esoteric knowledge, as well as a lot of the hidden sciences. It may not be necessarily spoken to the masses. Can you all hear me? Yeah. Yes, we can. Okay. Okay, that's great. Um. However, we also have a lot of, you know, history that has been placed to the people. You know, a lot of times I speak to, you know, various Israelite like brothers as well. You know, of course, they got many different philosophies, you know, within their own sciences. However, they have the story about the uh, Israelites who was enslaved or held in bondage inside of Egypt, which we will call Kenya, ancient. Um, right. What is your take on that, my brother, from the actual historical point 
or what transpired opposed to the canal well, that you guys um, written inside the script. If we talk about the Temerian tale, then um, the only exodus would have been that which they refer to as the Hyksos being cast out by Upmosis, uh, Pharaoh Upmosis. Um, during the 15th dynasty. Well, actually, during the beginning. Uh, it was the 15th dynasty when the Hyksos came in, but by the 18th dynasty, excuse me, is when they got cast out. And it was first started with um, um, Amosis, who started casting out the um, Hyksos. And um, the Hyksos was also called the Habaru. Um, the Habaru is allegedly the name in which that becomes the word Hebrew, Later on, um, some of these things are still debated, to, um, debated, you know, debatable today, um, based on the point of view. Um, there still are uh, Christian scholars as well as um, biblical archaeologists, which states that there never was an exodus of the Hebrew Israelites, at least not in the way in which that we see it within the scripture. Or the Bible. So if they're talking about an exodus, an exodus, it had to be that of the Hyksos, because that's the only dispelling of a group of people in which that the Temerians um, speak of. Indeed, my brother. Absolutely. I, I thank you for that. That's what I get a lot of times also. I know we speak a lot of the esoteric sciences, and can right. that even be applied, you know, that, you know, yeah. same well, concept I, I mean, uh-huh. right, right. Well, I mean, you know, as far as the esoteric on that um, point of view, you know what I'm saying? I mean, that that was something in which that dealt with some type of historical reference, um, even though it was twisted, you know, um, in the Jewish I, um, ideology in order to make themselves the chosen people. Um, you know, uh, that's that's what that was done for. But as far as, you know, them, of course, being the chosen people, we know that the chosen people is the first people who was put on the planet. Um, <laughs> and that was, you know, no doubt. Uh, if God, right, if God chose some people, then it would have been the first people who he put on the damn planet. And who was the first no people, doubt. according to their own science, is God. No doubt. So-called black, right, so-called black people. And, you know, Elijah Muhammad then said that. Who's the black man? The black man is the Asiatic. Okay, that's, that's, right. Right. Know? that's right. That's right. That's right. Right. He's a right. Right. You know. So. Um. So. 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 I mean, that's that's just what it is. You know. So. You know, you know what they what they've tried to do is just simply twist. You know, historical facts in order to make them relate once again to a heritage in which that they had to make up in order to to um, make the world perceive them. Um, and then, of course, um, from the Zionist political party shit in order to steal land from the Palestinians, which actually both of them is in um, in Africa. Um, we need to keep both of them about the truth. Absolutely. <laughs> and that was another question. That was my second question, too, excuse me, too, brother. I'm glad you spoke upon that. Them having an ideology that they're not so-called African. Of course, I understand. We understand that Africa is more of a French, you know what I'm saying, term from the colonization that occurred, however. They still viewing that they're not connected to those particular people inside of the Nile Valley. What, what did you take on that, uh, my brother? Who who said that? Yeah, the, I got a lot of Israelites. I, 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 I speak to them. Oh, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. Okay. Uh, they don't know what the hell they're talking about. They, they, right. they well, say that they're more closer to the European than they are to the so-called Africans. What? Is, right, right. right. Yes, yes, I, I know. I, I heard it. All right. Well, th- this is what happens is that um, the reason why they would say something of that foolishness magnitude, uh, I would think is because they're looking at it from that they are Sh- Shemites and that mm-hmm. the ancient Egyptians were Hamites. Um, and so, therefore, they're saying that they're not from the same lineage, but that's a lie because... Um, Noah gave birth to all three of them. That's Shem, <laughs> Ham, and Japheth. Absolutely. So if you want to, so if you want to claim that um, you're not from the same line, nigga, um, nigga, you come from the same father. Typically, <laughs> if that's what you're gonna go by. 
Right. Right. If you don't go by that's that. So we already know that that's full of shit right there with that with that mentality. Right. You know, so, in this, you know, and then you spent 430 years in Egypt. If you don't think that, nobody mm-hmm. fucked, huh? <laughs> mm-hmm. You it's know, a, it's not 430 even years. Right, 430 years. Ain't no sexing going on, huh? All right. <laughs> no doubt. No, no doubt, right. my brother. So that, that, means, that, that, that Right, so that means the Shemite and the Hamite line mix when they eat. That means... All of that happened right there. You know what I'm saying? So, I mean, we just got to get out of the foolishness. I mean, Dr. Ben, his name, Yusuf Ben Yachman, like we stated, you know, is right. Hebrew. Um, but, yeah, he studied Egyptology. You know? Mm-hmm. Um, uh, he, he had a Ph.D., you know, from um, Barcelona's um, University of Barcelona, Spain, in, um, a Ph.D. in Moorish history. So we just got to get out of this nonsense that there's some separate information. Um, take all the information. It's all from our people because we're global people. We just didn't come from one region, one area, you know, one section. Right. You know, um, and that's what we got to get out of the mind state of. Absolutely, my brother, because you, you know, like, um, you know, we know that it's holding us back, you know, and they have right. these concepts about, our nationality in the, in the sense that they being of you know of is of Israelite of, of Hebrew and like I you know to my understanding Hebrew is a language it has nothing to do with the language right. of, of a people you know? right and even then the word Hebrew means to cross over what was it that they cross right. over the Tigris and yeah. Euphrates so it was a it's not just a language it's a, it's the action actually right it's right a history it's the current. No, no doubt. Right, right, right. We can be, you know, we so, can be Hebrew. Yeah, yeah, indeed, indeed. Um, and I, I, I'm not going to, you know, hold you up, but I'm going to go continue on with your journey for this day. Um, I was going to say, I, you were speaking about uh, Hollywood. That came up. To my, to my understanding, even with the Hollywood, I actually went back to um, with Merle and the Magician. I want to say that was. Something that was manifested outside of the, uh, you know, the old pieces and the high society. They actually placed mm-hmm. there. I'm gonna say Merlin actually had the uh, war that was made of what was supposed to be holy wood. Mm-hmm. That spelled, you know, throughout right. the cat. Merlin the magician. Right, Merlin the magician. He had a wand called made out of Hollywood. Right, exactly. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's, mm-hmm. I want to add it equally with the cycle, you know, brother. Right. So, yes, man, it, it's always great you know, speaking to you all. Uh, also, Brother Loom, I got to get uh, with you on some things. I'm, I know I uh, told you I'm in the South Carolina area. Of course, I'm going to be getting to you there. I had some things that uh, some images I had involved in uh, staying on the UCC side, dealing with the law. And, uh, two other okay, appreciate there. that. Okay, I'm staying on the nationality perspective. So okay. Can, uh, yes, yes, we're looking for me to be getting with you. You all do time here, brother. Good fortune. Okay, bro. Appreciate you. Thank you. Absolutely. And I ask you all to continue on the journey, continue to do your duty with the new cycle. And um, for time, my brothers, I hope to see you all in the future. Same here, bro. Peace Thank you. Peace. My brother. Peace. It's long. All right, we got area code nine seven eight. Area code nine seven eight. You on the air? How y'all doing, yo? This is Tetan and Day. Well, well, Peace. 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 doing good. I know I'm about to I'm about to be kicking it with y'all tomorrow too. It's crazy, right? <laughs> we got um yeah 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 like at eight o'clock I'll be kicking it still like, but um just a couple things. I mean, first of all, just just real quick, what was that program you told me about, uh, brother Aline? You told me about what was a mixed cast. A wave cast. There was a, a a program for music and sound manipulation. I think it was was it mixed cast? Mix, no, nah, mixed craft. Mixed craft. Mix, right, mixed craft number five, and it's downloadable okay. free right now if you if you get it. And um, you know what I'm saying um, people are using it, you know, in order to, you know make make some um good music. 
some bangers, right? Some new shit too, because I, I haven't even heard of it. But I was looking for, I kept putting in cast, so I was like, damn, Yo, nah, you know, it's I crap. knew yeah, crap. it's crap. Yeah, it makes more sense too. Yeah, but um, I just want to talk about like alkaline baths first off. You know, I was thinking like, how do you feel, brother, about like bathing with the herbs and um, you know, like on top of even taking the muscle and bone correction herbs, like for healing the crippled, like someone could drink a bunch of DE, maybe take, take some monatomic gold or collodial silver and then like bathe in some, like, you know, alkaline herb bath. And how do you feel about that? Like, yeah, is that the uh-huh. maximum for like... Mm, well, I mean, you also, you, if you add in, yeah, if you also add in some other herbs too, like um, comfrey, um, which is real good for bones, from healing the bones, um, based on the okay. um, alfalfa, moringa, you know, these are real good um, herbs to add to in order to heal the bones. So, yeah, yeah, definitely. Really? That sounds good. Yeah. Because Savy was talking about in this last video I seen with Savy, he was talking yeah, about, oh, we got the I springs know. in the backyard. You seen it, right? The, 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 let, 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 me, let me tell you, Dr. Savy also said don't eat broccoli. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> you know, like, Dr. Savy him- also said... Right, Dr. Sabi also saying don't use um, peppermint is a hybrid. Um, don't use garlic. So Why there's a lot of things? herbs. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, I mean, he explained it, you know, explaining it the way that he can. But I know that those rules don't do not apply to um to everyone because everybody have different blood types. Right. Exactly. You know, this so major. The this for major. <laughs> Right, there's four major different blood types. You know, O blood, they can deal with garlic. You know what I'm saying? Now that might be the best that might not be the best thing for um you know, a A or B blood type or something like that, but for a O blood type, you know, it can be necessary because um uh, of the issue of thyroid, um, that they um have a disposition towards and also um also because of infection. Um, prone, you know what I'm saying? Um, so right, that that's yeah, that, that's 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 different. You know what I'm saying? So I mean, that's one thing that a lot of the nutritionists are not added into the scenarios, the blood types, and to me, that's essential because uh, that shows your genetic bloodline. That means that these are the major foods that your bloodline was eating. That means that there's a disposition towards the foods in which that can help heal you, which act as medicine, or foods that can kill you, which act as poison. Mm. And yeah. if, you know, if you're dealing with your bloodline and you're saying that, you know, our ancestors and we're dealing with our bloodline, but then niggas ignoring the fact of their blood type, I'm like, yo, y'all some ignorant niggas. Yeah. You can't get one with the other. You know what I'm saying? If you're going to worship your ancestors, you think they outside of you someday where they're your genes. They're in your blood. They are your blood. Right. They all of you. Right. They are you. You know what I'm saying? Pay attention to what the hell is the um intelligent voice is tell you know trying to tell you. You know what I'm saying? Listen to your body. Yeah. Cause the genes, your your genetics, your ancestors are trying to tell you what you know what is good and what is not. They you know tell what you. And so, it, right, right, right. No, so you can use what, what the about, outline. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, I was, I was gonna yeah, say I was about gonna say that right, right. No, no, well, no go I ahead. Mean, what was you gonna say? No, I was gonna say that. Well, I mean, old blood types is lactose intolerant, so they can't, okay. they can't even deal with dairy products like that. You know what I'm saying? Um, okay. You know, uh, yeah. You know, B blood type can deal with some dairy. You know, is there, um, is there but some dairy A blood that type used to have or? It, it, we never had no dairy, basically, right? We just ate alkaline. Um, we just ate plant life, basically, for a billion years, right? Like, weren't we not even, what we didn't have, like, no, because Sabi talks like there's vegetables that are junk food, you know? Like, like he's like, these are vegetables, but they are creative vegetables. Like, they're junk food. And I saw Master Inky had a video. He said, he said, uh, milk is more poisonous than, or, or, or more harmful to your body than flesh. Did you see that video? Right. Yeah, yeah. You also see more more uh destructive than poor. Yeah. 
Well, 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 I, I don't know what true, but, but, but I, I, know, I know what Ben Sticky is saying. I agree. Yeah. I mean, dairy, dairy is um is deadly for us. It, um, it creates too much mucus in the body. Um, excess of mucus in the body um cause you to hold on to um the bacteria, you know, and we wow. develop into illnesses and sickness, and you know, and have all types of um situations and problems, you know. So you have to get rid of the excess mucus, and that's what Dr. Sabi is saying is that essentially your diet is mucus, so therefore, um. That's what mucus is, is disease. Is the um the disease is coming from the mucus. So get rid of the mucus, you get rid of the disease. You okay. Know? Um, you know, um so you, you can create a mucus diet. You know, matter of fact, that's what Dr. Sadie got his information from was the guy who the mu- um wrote made the mucus the mucus diet, uh, from Shu. That book is very yeah. Right. I've seen I think it, that book we're back in the, you know, back in the uh, mid 1900s. You know what I'm saying? Or somewhere. So, um, yeah. So Dr. Sabi, um, Dr. Sabi utilized that information. Um, you know, and you know, and also he was a student in the Nation of Islam. So he read, of course, on how to eat and live by Anu Galashmana, who spoke about um, being a vegetarian um, mm-hmm. a lot in the book. So he combined um, the theologies and, you know, he came up with, and also him being an herbalist, you know, was able to, you know, master his form of um, herbalism. Yeah. You know? mm-hmm. Stuff's different, too. Like, you see Dr. Africa saying the stuff that he say, and he's a, he's a strong-looking brother. Like, somebody can't, someone can't look at Dr. Africa and be like, you know, like, you're unhealthy. Looking at Dr. Africa, right. you know, but like, you know, maybe it's right. like he's definitely got the old blood too, Dr. Africa too, probably. Right, 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 right. Well, well, I mean, I lectured uh, with uh, with Dr. Layla Africa, uh, matter of fact, this past year, you know, yeah, 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 you know, wow. um, he's still looking good, and um, uh, if I'm not mistaken, I believe he in his seventies. He's in his seventies, huh? And, and yeah. the brother's having milk, though. Isn't the brother just having certain things? And he he kind of lays out how to, you know, the the rate in which to take them, like to be consuming them. He 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 slows down the rate, right? He don't really say like we even um to necessarily eat every day. Got to Africa, right? Doesn't he say talk about fasting too or not? Nah? Right. No. 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 Nah. Uh, right. This fasting, of course. Uh, also, you know. Uh, I mean, he's really a fruitarian. That's that's what he um, states. He he he's done what beyond a vegan uh, or vegetarian. He at the fruitarian level. See, there's like mm, seven that, levels. You have um, omni, you have omnivorous, you have carnivorous, you have vegetarian, you have vegan, you have fruitarian, you have liquidarian, and the last one is breatharian. So there's like several levels, right? There's several levels to mastering um, the signs of the um, of the holy uh, said black body. Yeah, the the temple, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is the goal, brother? Is the goal to be like like breathtaking? Like, is that the the ultimate goal? I I I remember I've talked about a couple times. Like, I went all summer almost not eating. Like, we was outside, we was just doing right. music, you know, like, we going to people's houses, going to the basement, you know, like, whether smoking peppermint or whatever we, we had access to. And, you know, we weren't really eating, we were drinking, you know, but it seemed right. like we weren't even hungry. That's it started getting crazy. It started being like, well, like, how can we do this, you know? Right. So, I don't right. I don't know. I feel like I'm at fruitarian at any given moment. I can go a whole week just eating fruit. Like, I can just, yeah. You know. Well, I mean, and um, and that's really what it is. You can do that. You know, um, and there shouldn't be a problem with doing that. Um, you know, you decide on, you know, on when you want to fast, you know what I'm saying, doing a fruit, you know, fast, or or you can fast when you want to do a, veg- you know, a vegetable fast or, you know, liquid dairy and fast. It's up to you, you know what I'm saying? Just listen to your body, yeah. you know. That's, right. the point. that's the point you're saying, you know, listen to yourself and see, you know, what works for you. You know, but the prescription, you know, from what we're saying is that, you know, you know, you can do it based on your blood type and that can help, 
with some of the um, examples and some of the um, methods or tech or techniques that you can utilize. Once you know your okay. blood type, then you know how you know the foods that are good that works for you. Because remember, we always say, um, "Let your medicine be your food." But how are you gonna let your medicine be your food if you don't know um, the foods or which that you know works for your body? You know what I'm saying? They can't be medicine exactly. for you. You know, and that's even if we um have a vegetarian diet, if we carnivorous, if we are vegan, you know what I'm saying, or fruit you know, fruit fruitarian. You know what I'm saying? Like for example, um old blood types work real um good with pineapples, but they might not be able to eat coconut. Mm-hmm. Wow. You know? oh, wow. Their blood type. You know, right. Um old blood types yeah. don't do too well with um with citrus fruit, like for example, oranges. You know what I'm saying? Unless they're sick. But just eating oranges uh, every day, they're saying no, they have a problem. There's too much acid. You know, so yeah. I mean, uh this this these are things that you have to know and that way you can um develop some type of um you know um right. limit, as I call it. You know, I don't say diet, but live it um for yourself limit. so that you can uh right, so you can um you know do what you need to do for yourself. And that's big. I'm, I'm gonna have to get that uh, blood type tester kit from y'all as soon as I get a chance, you know, and start getting moving. And two more things, r- real quick. Um, what, about the uh, herbs, still on herbs. Um, what are the herbs? Because I'm really chasing our, our maximum and abilities. Like I'm chasing, like I want to be able to scan minds. You know, I'm doing the qigong, and um, ever since first came with you, when you, when even every little thing you say, I can pick up on what I've done, even singing and stuff. And you know, as far as like the pauses in between the breaths. Are, are really where the power comes, like when you steal your breath, like when you when you when you when you halt your breath, is when actually your glands are doing extreme stuff, you know. But I feel like Tanny's got some herbs, and he talks about the herbs, and like I think herbs he's talking about directly affecting, effective of like telekinesis or precognitive stuff, or like are these herbs you know of? Any, any herbs you know of that um, benefit benefit us in that way? Yeah, mushrooms. Mushrooms? Mm-hmm. And I've been eating mushrooms, too. I mean, I used to eat more mushrooms. But I feel like I saw a video where the brother said, the brother said it's like a plant-like animal. He's like, you know, one of the Sabi team. He was like, oh, so, you know, it's like a plant-like yeah. animal. We don't know if we should eat it, but right. I used to eat mushrooms. Right, right. But, 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 but we're talking about, once again, psychedelic um, transmission. Yeah. We're talking about, like, for example, production of DMT or penolin. And um, one of the best herbs or plants that can do that is the red and white mushroom. Um, and we said north and grown uh, from dung um, in a cow patch. Now, you know? now you mean uh, those the, 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 the strong mushrooms, like the hippie mushrooms you mean too. That's right, what you mean, right? Because right. I've eaten those before too. I've seen people freak yeah. out on them too, you know, so I remember I, I wasn't really eating them. I didn't like chase it again, but Get some of those. Yeah, well, I mean, um, yeah, that's that's what I'm talking about. But um, a good person in order to check out is Kalindi Ehi, um, Master Kalindi Ehi. Um, he has a lot of work on that particular mushroom and many other um, herbs that can be utilized as far as producing um, psychic awareness and abilities and so forth and so on. And production DMT. You know, so and this um, check name is out. like Kundalini or Kundalini. No, uh, Kalindi, Kalindi, Kalindi. Like K A. Uh, no, no, K I N L I. Yeah. Y D I Kalindi. Okay. E I Y I, if I'm not mistaken. So Kalindi E H. Now, you can go back. I interviewed him um, in the archives my first year. Um, so go back three years ago, and um, you'll hear him talk about um, the mushroom um, on here. So just go back to some wow. archive shows and look up for the Ehi, and you hear, um, hear him talk about it. Okay, that's big, you know, because that's pretty much the stage right. I want to just have. us. I know we all have to be at that stage, and we already are naturally, like Flea Burn said. Naturally, it's just going to be happening. 
But I just want to make sure I'm definitely right. all the way doing everything I can to, you know, right. jump it off. You know what I mean? No doubt. Yep. Yeah, yeah right. so I don't know. Um, yeah, thank you. Thank you all and everything. And um, tomorrow yeah. I'm ready, thank yo. You, Go back in. Thank, no, thank right, you, God. Peace, God. Peace. All right, we got area code 214. Area code 214, you're on our air. Peace. Area code 214. Peace. Peace. I, 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 I was uh, muted. Peace, Dr. Aline. Peace, Brother L. Peace, Sister Kadir. Peace, Peace, God. Brother Wale, Wale Jamal. Peace. Peace. I, I kind of chimed in late. Well, I didn't know the main topic of tonight. What, what, what was it about the 18th Dynasty? Yeah, well, that's what we talked about was um, um, Ankh Aten, um, the divine hymns of Ankh Aten, uh, who is known as Akhenaten. Um, I'm in Hotep the Fourth, and from his hymns came for the biblical Psalms, in which that when the Psalms are read, there's 150 Psalms. When the Psalms are read, there are certain keys that are supposed to be sung. All right? So when you sing the Psalms, is a spell that you're doing, and these spells have any um, over your life. So, like for example, if you read Psalms one, Psalms one is known to remove negative energy. All right. If you read Psalm seven, you know, um, then um, that helps with uh, removing um, a negative court case or, or, or judgment in the court case. Um, if you read uh. like twenty one. You know, um, Psalms, then ask for um, for travel, for safe travel. If you read like Psalms 13, that's to help um, to keep you safe and um, keep you from an early death. You know what I'm saying? So each song yeah, has a uh, particular. Yo, yo, uh, Father, let me cut you off. Your queen got a got a book about that, right? Because I, I bought it. <laughs> the Divine Hymns, I got it in the house. Yeah, right. and then how you right. uh, a certain candle relate to each uh, each verse? Exactly. A certain color. Yeah, uh, yeah, that's a good book uh, for anybody listening. Y'all need to get that. But my my like my question my question was like the eighteen like we know that they messed up the timeline. So right. like how long ago was the eighteenth dynasty based on our calendar? Yeah. Do we just subtract four hundred years or? Well, it's about it's four, about, it. four, about, about thirty five hundred years ago. About thirty five hundred years ago. Right. So, so, so it would be about four thousand years ago, and then of course five hundred would be thirty five hundred years ago. Okay. Okay. I see. I see. I, see, I get it. Mm-hmm. All right. Uh, I, I ask another. Can I ask another question on this? Um. Is a time a problem, or are y'all gonna go off, or can I ask another question? Oh, go ahead. Oh, okay, I'm fine. Um, about the Shem, uh, I heard a brother speaking on the Shem, uh, Ham, mm-hmm. and Japheth. That, I, mm-hmm. by my understanding, that's an esoteric principle, is, isn't it? Yes. Yeah, so than the actual lineage of people. Um, Shems are those who are able to transform their bodies into macabres, which is um, light vehicles. So Asiatic. Uh, right. Asiatic so right. So um you know, it's not a you know, lineage in, in, in that particular sense. It's a method yeah. of accomplishing something spiritual. Not you know, in which that we you know, for those who take on who choose themselves, that's how you become chosen, because you choose yourself. Not because you was Chosen by a invisible guy that you can't explain, you know, and that, like and that's the way science that many are called, right? And a, and a, and a few are chosen exactly. Yeah, yeah, you agree. know. Exactly. So, so would Jack would Jack Hess represent the mind and Ham represent the body? We talking three three levels of consciousness. No, I'm somewhat, you know. Um, mind, body, not and that spirit. No, it is. Because I was thinking, mind, body, and spirit. I, okay, so I was thinking mind, when they say, that's what I'm saying. That's mind, body, and spirit. 
Okay, 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 yeah, yeah, okay. So like that 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 will explain the whole curse thing. If curse being the the melanin within the body, and that melanin would have to well, work for the mind, or no? Well, the incarnate the incarnation of the soul in the body is the curse. Well, that's what it said by the Gnostics. Yeah. Gnostics that's say that. Um, that that the um, soul being incarcerated or incarnated in the body is the, is the sin, and hence the That's origin the of where Christians get the concept, right? That that you was born into skin or born into sin. Because that's fire. So, yeah, in that's where that concept. Right, that, uh, that's where that concept comes from. Okay. 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 Oh mm-hmm. so, uh, yeah. So did, did I, did, Ham and John. Oh. Now, no is the mind. Okay. Okay. Right? So, okay. of course, the word Noah comes from the Greek word nos, N-O-U-S, nos. And within the, um, within the code, nos means the mind. Okay. And then three, three levels of mental, okay, three levels of mental state, mental okay. consciousness. Right. Okay. Okay. Uh, did did y'all have y'all touched on this flat Earth talk? Or did have y'all done a show on that, or is that too much to go into? No, nah, it's not too much. I mean, um, I already took my point of view about it that the Earth is flat and at the poles. That is not uh, flat in the terms of what we think, like a pancake, but it's oblong like an egg. If you turn an egg sideways, that's how the Earth is. So the mm-hmm. views that NASA shown us with this damn perfectly brown earth is bullshit. Um, so that's the reason why, and that's the reason why um, people are now turning towards the flat earth theories because they know that um, the things in which that NASA been showing us in space is nonsense. You know, um, that's really going um, personally outside the Van Allen belt, you know, um, they can't go beyond the Van Allen belt. Now, they can send unmanned missions, you know, um, outside, but as far as them personally going, you know, um, as claimed as astronauts and that type of thing, allegedly that has not happened. Um, some say that it has. Some say that it hasn't. It hasn't happened in that way. There's Stargates, you know. It's all talkable, you know what I'm saying, um, until we see more um, proof of these particular things. Um, we can, you know, speculate all we want, you know. Um, we know that the European, uh, the most sought after astronaut will have to be the black female, all right, the Moorish or Moabitess. She will have to be able to, she has the, um, she has the shape uh, for, um, for space travel, as well as also the melanin, you know, um, you know, so forth and so on. After her comes the so-called black male, and then uh, the white female, and then the white male. So if the white male went up into space, you know, is a greater, the greatest chance of them coming back with cancer, you know, if they always do. Beyond- and they went beyond the Van Allen belt, which, um, you know, I mean, what's his name? Um, uh, the guy who, um, he did Space Odyssey. He did the movie Space Odyssey, but he, uh, his wife came out after he died, uh, uh, what is it, Ruby? Um, I can't remember right now. But his wife said that he's the one who actually faked the moon landing. Yeah. Yeah. Same one who made the movie, okay. Right. Okay. Hey, Hold on, Stanley Kubrick. He faked the moon landing. Yeah, Sandy, right. Stanley Kubrick, right. Oh, exactly. okay, 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 okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right, yeah. right. So, 
you know, and and even crazier is the fact that um, they had Richard Hoagland on Coast to Coast back in the late 90s, the state, mid to late 90s, they specifically stated that um, that there was um, fake assimilations <laughs> of them. Now, why would it have to be fake assimilation? He said, well, that was done in order to give the audience something to be entertained with. <laughs> wow, damn. So, 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 so I, you know, so I, you know, you can't, you don't know what to take from these right. people, man. Yeah. No, there's yeah, not so much. <laughs> right, because they never fall right, you know. So, you know, I know what I can take from my people. My people got a heritage. My people got a culture. My people got yeah. um, oral traditions. And, you know, when they, when the Dogon speak about Sirius and that they had um, interactions with the Syrian beings that they are descended from, when we talk about the Amazulu, uh, with Kuda Matua, the last Af- one of the last African shamans, well, last South African shamans, um, and he's stating that the Amazulu people came from Mars. Um, I, these things I can work with. Yeah, yeah. So, because yeah. Um, Ogon was talking about the Star Series back in the 1930s, and the European didn't know what the hell they was talking about. No. You know, and couldn't see it. And they was able to see what they couldn't see with the damn telescope. Huh. Right. So, so, you know, this, you know, this, this, this thing here, I can believe much more than I can um, from our people than I can from them. You know, everything right. they have done has been reverse psychology in some shape, form, or fashion. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, All right. I was, I was, uh, I was watching one of them flat earth, um, you know, uh, presentations or whatever. And they were talking about how the religions mm-hmm. always relate, referred to it being, you know, more flat than round or whatever. But they went to, right. I think it was, I, I want to say India somewhere. And the mm-hmm. mythology stated that the center of the earth and the center of the universe was mount, was a mountain. And it was like two or three different ones. And all of them named it Mount Maru. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Right. M-E-R-U. So I'm like, right. obviously... You know, like we, so that kind of messed my mind. Like, are we like in the center of, like, what universe? Like, is that a is that a symbolic thing, or is that like an esoteric principle, or is that like literally? You know what I mean? Well, like, America. Was it both? But the word, of, yeah. Well, the word America is my rule. Um, look it up. You can see um in definition. Yeah, yeah. Um, what's the yeah. universe you do? Date 1937. That the original application of the name of America is Maru. Yeah. That's in your book. That's in your book. Yeah, yeah. But it's also, um, you know, from Webster's Dictionary, Webster Universal Dictionary. So there's a lot of stuff, you know, and the, um, the Indians, like you said, the Sanskrit Vedic, which is the Indo Kushite people, they, the Tamils, they speak about um, Maru as being the mountain also. Um, so that means a lot of is a lot of information, you know, a lot. And it all always come back to us, I notice. Oh yeah, always do. Have to because yeah. we're the we the original. <laughs> all right. Peace and love, man. I say, yeah. say thank you, man. Thank you for everything love, you do, man. Keep doing what you're doing. I'm gonna keep supporting you best way I can. Peace and love. I right, appreciate you. Thank you. Peace and love, God. All, all right, brother L. You got you got any? Closing comments for the well, night. Well, the, uh, the, the the night show was excellent. So All right. right. That's what I can say. Well, I'm looking forward to doing it again next Wednesday. Dr. Eileen. All right. Sounds good to me, Brother L. Sounds good to me. All right. Well, um, y'all got a chance to listen to us now uh, for almost two and a half hours. We appreciate you holding on. And, um, so we love y'all. Come on back next week. I'm um, gonna be right here at the same more time, same more place. You know what I'm saying? There's much more uh, info. All right, we out. Whether you suffer from pain in your back to aches in your knees. 
Come on down and purchase you some ancestral tea to get rid of all the parasites, toxins, and fleas. Spiritual elevation for cosmic gravitation. So put away the patience, because there's no time to be wasted. Tax refund season, Metro PCS has an offer so good you'll want to shout it from the mountaintops. Switch to Metro PCS, Metro PCS. and get two, get two. 4G LTE phones, phones. for free. free. Switch to Metro PCS and get two free 4G LTE smartphones from brands like Samsung and LG only at Metro PCS. Limited time offer, sales tax not included in phone price, after instant rebate, coverage and services not available everywhere. See store for details and terms and conditions.